Han är eh, chef för OECDs eh, avdelning för utbildning and director for the Directorate of Education and Skills at OECD and hence the director of PISA. And he's uh, going to talk with us a little bit about PISA and uh, the result, the Swedish results and what conclusions we can draw from them. Um, so please welcome uh, Dr. Schleicher. Is there any single reform that might have an impact on the Swedish results in 2015 that you think about? Well, you know, most of the re results reflect actually the long-term development of an education system, not uh, what you do today or tomorrow. So what you expect is that the kind of changes and reforms that we have seen over the last maybe five, ten years are the ones that you're going to see in the next PISA results. Surely, when you look at the trajectory of Sweden on the PISA, the increase in between school variability and performance, the kind of more challenging picture of school performance overall are a result of a much more heterogeneous system than what Sweden used to have in the past, are the result of a lot more responsibility resting on individual schools, but actually a quite weak overall school system. A few mechanisms to mobilize knowledge, to spread knowledge, to share innovation, to connect teachers, to connect schools. And those are things that actually are pretty much compatible with what you see in today's results. Swedish politicians have the, uh, made up a goal that we should be top 10 in 10 years in the PISA test. Is that realistic, do you think? Well, absolutely. Actually, Sweden has great assets in its education system. There are very few countries where the population, society, values education more than Sweden. Sweden invests a lot of resources in education, more than many other countries around the OECD, the industrialized world. Sweden has many assets. I think if Sweden can sort of galvanize that kind of resource, it could see very significant improvement. And look at a country like Poland, with a lot less money, has seen dramatic improvements, moving up very rapidly. Many of the world's top 10 performers have not been there 10 years ago. Education is a rapidly changing field. I do think actually Sweden has very good prospects to actually see significant gains in performance. Is there any specific change that we should do, that we could learn from, for example, Poland? Well, there are two things. Uh, the easy part are the kind of systemic changes. Now, what is clear is that Sweden has a lot of local initiative at schools. It's very easy to open a school, very easy to run a school. But it's actually quite weak as an overall education system. So now, again, you know, connecting schools, connecting teachers, building strong mechanisms of diagnostics, of intervention. That's the part that is still lacking. And that's, I think, a quite easy, straightforward agenda. And the deeper challenge is to change educational practice, to change teaching, to make sure that, you know, the, the most the pedagogical, we not only have 21st century skills, you know, everybody talks about creativity, critical thinking, problem solving, and so on, but also 21st century pedagogies. And that's a much, much harder challenge to change practice in the classroom. And that's only something that teaches themselves school, that in, in, in a profession that owns its professional practice. The collaborative practices, uh, sharing practice, professional autonomy in a collaborative practice is a very important predictor of success. But actually Sweden doesn't do so well on this by international comparisons. Uh, there's a lot of informal exchange in schools, but when you think about deep professional collaboration, you know, do teachers work together across subject matter disciplines? Do teachers share experience? Do teachers observe each other's classrooms? Do they learn from those kinds of observations? Sweden is not as doing as well as many of the highest performing countries. It's a lot of room for improvement still. Uh, one of the reforms the last years is the first teacher reform where uh, teachers get better salaries. Uh, uh, is that a good reform? I know that's always controversial, but our uh, actually analysis shows that career differentiation is very important, you know, to build career diversity in this, build ways for people to progress in their profession. It's always difficult how do you evaluate that. Now, I, I acknowledge all of the challenges, but most high-performing countries have actually quite differentiated career paths, career diversity, ways for teachers to sort of move up in their profession and actually also contribute to the profession, help other teachers to become better teachers. This is a development that we've seen in many of the world's most advanced systems.